the Rogue's Passage podcast. Today, we have some pretty interesting topics. Obviously, we're going to fire into the Fallout that just got released, literally, as of you guys seeing this, probably like three days ago. And who two, are you? Two days ago. I'm Brando, <laughs> as usual. If you if you don't know already, then um, go watch more of our content. And like and subscribe, because yeah. it, it really helps. Like uh, Rating please. on Spotify. I'm Tanner Cherry. Yeah. Spotify ratings are pretty hyped for this little project, so. Mm-hmm. And it's free. Yeah. And we are also joined by the ma- magnificent. Hi, I'm Brady McPie. Here to suck a lot of. C- <laughs> have a good oh time, God. you know. Uh, not make a right fool of myself. Gate. Hi, <laughs> no, we're having a good time over here at the Rogues Passage. I'm Brady Magpie. We are back for another fun. Ex- just take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we uh, we promised on the last podcast that we had a lot of topics that we wanted to get to. We got through quite a few of them, but we. Uh, Kind of got railroaded by our own when have indulgence. We ever, when have we ever been absolutely on point, though, with our Oh, I know. Well, actually, honestly. no, I'd like to bring up that, like, if we look back at the records, it's yeah. probably been two months yeah. or a month and a... Yeah, we keep trying to get like, through topics, and then we don't because we keep just talking about the spoilers. It's a vibe. Yeah. Out, no, it's fine. We're we, vibing over here. Um, if you yeah, if you enjoy listening to our bullshit, yeah. we enjoy speaking it into the ether. <laughs> yeah. um, I really enjoy talking stuff like this with these two guys oh, and yeah. other people that we have on as guests. Oh, yeah. The, w- the beatings will continue until morale improves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, one, one thing that we don't, have. Don't tell them about the gnomes <laughs> in the back. The one thing we've put off, like, over and over, episode, episode after episode is uh, – Brandon wants to talk about like solitaire decks in Commander, yeah. uh, like a deck sort of like an archetype of uh, of, of play style. Which a deck that you so recently built features magnificently, but also it's very relevant because it was our most recent posted gameplay episode. Yeah, not our not our cleanest game, and you don't get to see the deck that I will be talking about shine like in its best form but there's a couple of turns in there where like you really get to see where i'm coming from on this uh, i but I, I i built alando the seer uh simic four drop he taps to exile cards lets you uh remove exile them into exile, suspend essentially pseudo suspend it doesn't give the card suspend puts time counters on them because it's mana value then you remove counters from them um the thing about the deck is it's all built around like untap synergies uh but it's all singer, single firing triggers off of a Lindo. So it's like tap, untap, draw, exile, do all this kind of stuff. Um, which really sparked in my mind because I love playing it and it's so much fun. But especially to this boy over here who's had to deal with the brunt of uh, dealing with it. is It was yeah, my first... There's an inherent problem. Yeah, it, it was my first indulgence into what's known as a solitaire deck. And a solitaire deck is basically when you turn the game of Magic multiplayer format into you are more so playing the game by yourself than other people getting to play, which Alundo had a problem with of every time I'd play it, it's turn three, turn four, turn five, turn six, whenever it starts to pop off, it's like my turn just because of how much there is to it takes 15 minutes just to do my turn. It almost uh, begs the question, should you be doing everything mm -hmm. you're doing right now on everyone else's turn except for your own, you know? Even, Even with that, it's just like, the decks can be fun, but it's 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 a weird nuance having just stepped into it of like, where does that fit in f- like Magic: The Gathering? Because obviously it's a it's a popular it happens, way to build decks. That's, I don't think it matters where it fits. I think it fits automatically with, with the game. There's going to be those moments where solitaire happens, um, even if it's not with the deck just singing. Solitaire can happen from just basic comprehension issues. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's it depends on if you're if you're angling solitaire in a competitive way as opposed to being a slow ass slug in the game <laughs> yeah I, I think more in so he's case, we're talking competitive for he, sure this this case i think we're talking about like deck that has so many game actions right yeah. like in competitive yeah um like if you're sitting down at a competitive table a competitive rel uh you can be uh penalized by a judge for not taking game actions quick enough mm-hmm. you actually have to like <laughs> suck, 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 no. right? but, but if, <laughs> if you have game actions to take you know, yeah. you, like you have to take them. And that's and the thing about Alundo is it's not slow game actions. It's, it's I'm, I'm quantity. Gonna, I'm, I'm going to untap and then tap Alundo 30 times during a turn because the engine's we, uh, online. We experienced that actually just yesterday with Oz when he came over. When he got, yeah, Oz. I think it, yeah, Oz, <laughs> Oz. Wonderful <laughs> wizard. Anyways, no, he had, I think it was... Uh, 12 extra turns that game yeah. with his Joy or uh, It might have been more. Was yeah. it? I think, well, well, yeah, no, you're right. He hit eight, he hit six, 
and then he hit four in one stack because of the Jin's attacks against the first time. Yeah. So yeah, you know, he had like what 20, 20 extra turns. Yeah. Well, yeah. and like I Bro. remember, I remember asking halfway through, I was like, "Is this deterministic? Like, can we wrap it up here?" And and he was like, "Yeah, I don't know." Yeah. And, and it's and true. That's, no, no, and honestly, that's the though, big thing because his Joy Rider deck is dependent on one thing. He really wants to get to that one. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, image prompt here. It's a, it's an extra turn spell or no, it's an epic spell. That yeah, it has at the beginning of your upkeep, epic. you go through someone's turn like deck and you grab something from it. And what he really wants to do is hit that five, six, seven times count with his deck build, copying it. And basically at the beginning of his upkeep, steal seven, eight, maybe yeah. nine permanents. And yeah. I've seen it done. Oh, yeah. I think six times from that spell with his combo. Oh yeah, yeah and cool, it's savage. cool deck. But and, yeah, once it's once it gets online, it, nobody else is really playing the game anymore. Yeah. So that's the solitaire thing. Is like you solitaire is a game that where you play cards by yourself. Mm. Yeah. Actually, a rewind to a sloppy episode we had a long ass time ago where I got way too drunk online playing Alaplani. Wait, which played, one? No, it was when I was playing Alaplani <laughs> and I totally derped with my freaking shroud. Oh yeah. Oh uh, no, yeah, the, with the, the lightning, lightning graves on oh, Alaplani yeah. when I was abusing uh, Sarah the hidden or the the viper's hand or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> fuck shroud and honestly, yeah. at the end of the day, fuck <laughs> lightning graves. But honestly, yes. Side side note, Lightning Greaves. It's nuanced. It's it's it's, it's it, linear. Don't don't always depend on it, please. Lightning Greaves is an overplayed, over appreciated card. It's good. Shroud is good. It's not that good. <laughs> when you, when you when can't you, do nothing to your creatures, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I guess what, what it's, what's it's the wisdom then. here is that Shroud or um, Lightning Greaves is a very significant asset in certain decks. Yeah. But make sure that your deck is uh, not actually like a, a non bow yeah. with that sometimes because a lot yeah. of people will put. Uh, lightning greaves in their deck to be like oh I want to make my commander uh, with haste or whatever to be able mm -hmm. to do blah 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 but you also want to do a whole bunch of other things targeting your commander and now you can't yep. don't put it in that deck because no. it's gonna it's the gonna amount, yeah the amount of times you're like okay my deck revolves around my commander you equip it with lightning greaves and all of a sudden you have like the one other creature that you could have potentially equipped for free right mm -hmm. and then it's gone and then you're stuck with a shrouded creature and it's so jarring yep. yeah. that two yep. mana with zero activation cost suddenly was more of a hindrance than it was a benefit. And that has happened to me more than once. Yeah. Right. And um, back to Alundo. Yeah. Um, I think really the more, biggest point that I wanted to bring up for it was just kind of like, when you are building or playing a deck that you know is going to go solitaire, when you know it's going to be that, do your best as a player. And I learned this through Alundo, where it's like I've, I've begun to kind of recraft it to make it a little bit less oppressive because we put some rude cards in there too. We put uh, Tef the Teferi in there that turns off people's instances and sort or like instances. We yeah, put the Jin's yeah. Ataxius Sorcerer in there. Speed bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the from what I've known, like you're, 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 this is a deck that is similar to the way I treat my Locust God where you're just going to curve to high power constantly. Like you're not going to tune it down, right? No. You're, you're no. just going to keep taking it higher. I, I don't know because to take it higher from where it already is well, would be for more releases. Frankly, that's it. I mean, to take to take it higher from where it already is is to just put in like the thirteen cards that craft it into CEDH. Yeah, that's really the only way to tune it up at this point. Well, you you've I, been civil with the the counter spells that you have in it. Well, no, and that's exactly what I mean. Is like I most people can't respond to what your abilities are. Pretty, or they or they, they try right? to. There yeah. was one game when we were out in Saskatoon. He tried to very um, hard. So yeah, yeah. He tried to stop it, or at least like make it so that I couldn't do any of my. I can't remember what card you played. I think it was tap all permanents you control or something. No, it was. Uh, oh God, what is it? Oh, this was in the hotel. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a, it's a, it's a mono white spell. Oh, no, it's no, no. A, it's an Alesh Norn themed thing. Yeah. Creatures you control, or no, permanents enter the battlefield to tap this turn. Draw a card. Yeah, no, Image no. Image prompt right here. Oh. It also it also wasn't Saskatoon. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Right in it's, front of him. Well, no, he did he did notion. This, Boys, but. have we learned yet with me? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it wasn't in Saskatoon. It was when we played it uh, during Rite of Passage, our first hosted mm. tournament, uh, when we had that little test game the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Forced um, worshippers. So he put, yeah, he put that card on the stack, effectively trying to like shut down the engine and tap all my permanents. And so I just put a Lundo's trigger on the stack, and yeah. then his next trigger, and then his next trigger. And, and it didn't even trigger. matter. It and did not 15, matter. And fifteen minutes later, I'd played out my turn, and then oh no, all my things are tapped. But I mean, to my benefit, I, you were like, oh, that does hurt my head a little bit, I guess. And yeah. I was like, hey, okay. it, it stifled me for a turn after I free cast like a third of my <clears> deck, <throat> and next turn I had lethal on board, basically guaranteed. It's. It's yes. hard to interact with abilities. Yeah. Honestly, at the end of the day, when you can't just counter target ability or just immediately remove something, and then also yeah. on top of that, have something with split second, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. The chain reaction is near impossible. Yeah. Well, it really, I mean, it comes down to 
I, like I, I pose this as a question. Yeah. Did you play that spell at the wrong time? I, Could I, you have waited no, until the end of the layering and then? Well, actually, no. The way that everything played out, I don't think yeah, once I guess that spell because even I drew because a card. That was my benefit. By the because if he cast because you know? he cast it at the very beginning. I think it was like the first Alumdo tap he cast it, and then I just put the rest of the triggers on the stack, and it was the last like the first card that he had exiled. Um, basically just sat on the stack for the entire time. Yeah, yeah. It was it. underneath everything. Um, because then it was just everything else that the it all resolved. The last thing came and tapped. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I learned um, the hard Well, no, way. no, everything else came, every, yeah, everything else entered and then the last thing came and tapped. Um, it was but, jading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was but like, this might help. And my... But that's, that's initially what like sparked my, my mind for this discussion is um, if you're going to build a solitaire deck, because they can be fun. I've had so much, I, I, I've got like a desperate want to play a Lundo as much as possible, much to the dismay of my friends because it's a solitaire honestly, deck. Honestly, I'm over it myself. So you can, we can play <laughs> more often, honestly. Um, but if you're going to build a solitaire deck, do your best, at least in my opinion, to build it in a way where as soon as you do start to solitaire up, it's going to a win con. You're not mm -hmm. just yeah. going for three turns of each turn is going to take 15 plus minutes because that takes away from the game. It takes away from other players' experience. One of the things that I've had to learn with playing Alundo is that as soon as I hit that point, it's a lot of like, I'm sitting there, big old smile on my face. The other three players at the table are kind of just like, oh, are you done yet? Oh, okay. No. Um, so yeah. and, there was also in like in standard, uh, this is like years ago now when yeah. Nexus of Fate was a, was a juggernaut. <laughs> Put that in the window too. Yeah, no. <laughs> Nexus of Fate was in. Actually, I noticed a, a misplay on the on the most recent episode. You put Nexus of Fate in the graveyard. It's supposed to shuffle back into the library, I think. Did I put it in the graveyard? I, don't think, I think so. Uh, we'll check on the. Watch the tape. Oh watch no, the no, tape. no! I uh, no, it was in my hand. Because it was one of the. No, cards I watched you I... put it in your graveyard. Oh, did I? Oh, I messed that up. <laughs> anyway, it, years ago, There's Nexus of Fate, triggers. crazy card. I don't, it, like. Just so many mistakes on Wizards' part for... Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we're going to make this foil buy a box promo called Nexus of Fate, which is take an extra turn, uh, shuffle back into your library. Like, it doesn't stay in your graveyard. It keeps going back in your library. So it, like, prevents mill strategies. Yeah. It, it, like, stops you from losing the game from mill. And, like, it was only available from buy a box promos, never, like, printed anywhere else. And it was only available in foil. So if you played in a tournament with this card... You, the only option you had was foil, and somebody actually got deck checked and, and scolded for using a, a curled foil. And they yeah. were like, "There's no other version of this card, dude." Yeah. Like, anyway, rant about Nexus of Fate. Um, Good card. God, why did I bring this up? Oh, oh yeah. So in standard, that card was like uh, a juggernaut, and it like it became a combo of the blue white control decks. But it was like because you just kept taking extra turns and yeah. then feeding it back into the deck, yeah. it was sort of sent you onto this, like this journey yeah. of like taking all these extra turns and it wasn't, you didn't win on the spot, right? You had yeah. to figure out if you would hit a stall point. Yeah. So like you sort of had to play it out there. Like everybody had to play it out. And it's similar with, uh, recently in, in pioneer, I think it was the Quintorius mm -hmm. cascade Quintorius. combo yeah. with all oh, yeah. of the, with all of the clones. Yeah. You've got like uh, spark double, you've got all these clones, there is potentially one way that the deck doesn't work. It is a, like a deterministic. If you hit these clones, blah, 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 then you win. But if you're so unlucky to hit the wrong four in a row, yeah. you don't. Yeah. So you have to play it out, right? So you have to, like, it ends up, and I mean, if you're playing on Magic Online, and <laughs> that's totally different because then you're actually running your chess clock down. Yep. And you have to take all these actions, which I think we talked about in a couple episodes ago about uh, the deck that I just built in paper in Popper, yeah. where... It's a great deck. Like in paper, you're like, I present the combo. I'm pretty sure we're done here, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. But in Magic Online, you have you got to oh, okay. I gotta click. Okay, I gotta make a golem. Okay, I gotta, I gotta like, sacrifice no, it. No, no, okay, no, I gotta no. make mana. The computer <laughs> masters yeah. say, "Bitch, go to work." Yeah, it's like even, even <laughs> you though you want to click yeah. to win, you gotta click to win. Yeah, like even, even though that 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 combo is sort of deterministic, you can sort of stick it to somebody on Magic Online and be like make it happen and then they're like fuck i gotta make it happen and then they may lose because they have to run their clock down so much right yeah. like yeah. solid like decks that require so many actions and so many triggers i would love um, to have experienced that when i was playing yeah. the deck last you know because yeah. that, that was uh, we we tried like uh brandon was there part of it he played a lundo i played my brawlin and shabra's deck it's wheels based no, so i played it, bryson stern 
Were you playing Crimson Storm? Yeah. You were playing Alundo? Okay, well, I, well so are we. Alundo is uh, the episode that just went up. Go, yay, watch, go watch it. And yeah, yeah. We'll probably, put one of the little title card things here. This is this, this episode right here. But yeah, right no, here. Uh, Our speaking, sloppiest epi- episode to date. Yeah, no, to, to capitalize once, I, I want to just add my own two cents for the solitaire thing. Yeah, yeah. no, I took yeah. almost 20 minutes yeah. to kill everybody. Yeah. And it was it was literally left to the cards. Um, I'm playing Wheels, and Brawlin is the, the winning factor of the deck. Honestly, half the time, I don't get to play my Shark Boy, even though he's beautiful. Shark Boy! But, yeah, Shabra's image. Oh! Anyways, um, but yeah, no, it literally took 20 minutes. Uh, it, there was uh, oh, what, that one Sphinx, the, the Azet Sphinx, that basically makes me put my hand on the bottom of my library every time I cast a spell to draw more cards. And mm-hmm. I was wheeling while I was doing this, so I was basically uh, casting a wheel, seeing that trigger, dealing damage, mm-hmm. making treasure, trying to keep up. Make, like with a with an uh, like it was just insane yeah. and i don't even know if i was playing correctly at that point you know like you're just barely it's like you're you're out there you know you're you're fishing for you know swordfish and you don't even know if you're in the right ocean like that's how i felt <laughs> <laughs> like it was nuts but it's a, but i won yeah. i'm in lake ontario what the fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> no and that's exactly a good point because even like me putting in kind of circle it back putting my nexus of fate into a lindo was yep. specifically on the notion and i got to kind of pull it off uh in a casual game the other day with our friends uh uh dylan jimmy and uh jenim uh we hit the untapped synergies we were playing a lundo they hadn't seen it yet so i had to i had to give them the ptsd of what a lundo can do <laughs> um we hit the untapped synergies and then we got the seedborn muse out and then we got the uh, <clears throat> Nexus of oh, Fate. Oh, yeah, right. And you, what was the card? It was Legolas's Quick Reflections. Quick reflect, Reflexes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Legolas's Quick Reflexes, I think one of the most broken cards that they've printed to date. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Too, no, too many. Three creature taps deals four damage or well, it deals, deals damage, damage equal to its CMC? To its power. power. To its power. To uh. any target creature. <laughs> on tap, like, for one green, tap on the screen. Yeah, it's on the screen now. In front it's of my face. Right um, yeah, you tap or you untap creature split second so that itself is already a very broken mechanic so you're going to split second untap a creature and then give it whenever it becomes tapped you deal damage equal to the creature's power to any target creature so in a deck like a lundo that loves to just tap and then tap and then tap and then tap it's disgusting it's it's incredibly rude yeah that's actually a really versatile uh protection spell that also gives you an extra untap oh yeah and it also and gives you creature and it also gives you creature hex proof yeah it's like, it's, what the it's heck? too many things on one card well, does it you know cost what? two mana or one mana one it's, one it's a green. one green it's you, one you know green. what i'm sorry orlando bloom as legolas incredible legolas yeah incredible kind of G- give him a good card right because his other cards suck right give him Wait, one good does card does orlando bloom deserve the fucking credit for that no, well, <laughs> I love the guy. He's he's great. The man who had four lines of dialogue in the whole film. Yeah, series. <laughs> I mean, most of us, most of us, most. I mean, me here. I mean, I know I beat my meat plenty of times to Pir- Pirates of the Caribbean. But Legolas, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Wait, William, wait. William Turner, fucking bullshit. Truth, <laughs> truthfully, truth, truthfully, he committed a crime on that role. No, I'm joking. Ooh, is this I'm, a segue into our next topic? Or it is. Like, it yeah. is. Well, actually, no. Before we before we go there, what yeah, okay. I, what I want to know, I want to pose to you as a question is, yeah. um, you wanted to bring this discussion up. Yeah. Is this like, do you want to? What's your take on these type of decks? Solitaire decks are incredibly fun. Play them if you get the chance. Build them if you get the chance. But if you're going to, and you know that it's going to be like, hey, this is going to be like a 15 minute turn, don't do it. <laughs> Unless you know you're going to win. Learn moral relevancy. Ask it's, yourself, it, should I be doing this? <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the player, and I'm also guilty of this, but this is like years ago. It's the player who builds like 13 field wipes in their deck. You're right. It's part of your game. It's part of your potential win con. When the game takes five hours because nothing can happen, it's not fun for it's, anybody. It's Magic the Gathering, not Magic the Solitaire. Well, yeah. It's something yeah. to consider. Honestly, yeah. at the end of the day, you want you want to have fun with your friends. Yeah. You don't necessarily want to bring them down. And if you're the kind of player, and not knocking those who do, frankly, there's a place for you in the world. But if, yeah, you're, going, if you're going into it... That was very harsh. It's true. If you're going into it self-centered, you have to take the licks the way that they're kind of coming at you. And it's you true. can't be a bitch about it. Because yeah. if you're going to be that way, That's don't true. play this game. It's true. I mean so, that. Like, Hot take, in, don't play the game. In closing, it's it's like the rule zero does exist in a... In a realistic sphere like yeah just make don't, sure you're playing with the right people if you're gonna take the play a deck that takes like, 15 minute turns like what, what did dan kind of rant about once like don't ex- don't reveal the mystique of your deck the amount yeah. of times i want to talk about my bruise with him he's like shut up 
<laughs> like, yeah. okay, okay, senpai. Show me, show me. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to geek yeah. with you. No, that that, that is that is a good point too. No, my my like for for wanting to get to this topic for so long is, is like no, it's it's just the mentality of going into a game. The turn zero discussion is there, but I don't know you can turn zero discussion a solitaire deck. It's <laughs> I mean, just you think you can. You can be like, guys, you're gonna be bored. Are you okay with this? <laughs> well, yeah, it, no, but but exactly that. It's just <laughs> if you're gonna build a solitaire deck, build it so that it has a win con, or build it to be like group hug. So Ooh. if you take a twenty minute turn, everybody comes out of it with like thirty extra permanents and forty mana in their mana. Pool, or be that one in ten that is the one in ten who just loves watching paint dry. Well, please, yeah, 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 yeah. please that, own that, your that, power, though. That's that, all I gotta that, say. That too. If you're, if you're gonna be that, <laughs> if you're, just if you're gonna be that player, understand that uh, people are probably gonna be, be like, right? you know, like, okay, guys, I'm only here for one reason to never want to play with you again. Oh, exactly. you should have got that knuckle crack on the mic. <laughs> it'll it'll probably sick. come through. It'll probably, it'll come through. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. So yeah, next um, up. This, yeah, this is just kind of a funny thing I wrote down because... Yeah, what? Commit so a last crime time, Hold on. Last time, we, last time we sat down to record a podcast, we talked about the Outlaws of Thunder Junction oh, set, yeah, right? Out, we talked about this new yeah, set, yeah. this new... Which I think actually the day that we recorded, yeah. I think the description oh, yeah. of the mechanic okay, 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 was okay, available, but we didn't know. We didn't yeah. look for it because we're bad podcasters. But, <laughs> we're not um, affiliated with it. We don't have pre-release information. No, no, no. So... Well, yeah, we let, let's bring up, let's put a card on screen, I guess, right now. We'll put up, uh, we'll put Oko on screen. Well, I just want to see uh, 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 my, my keyboard. Uh, keyboard's oh, like shit into bed. All right, so anyway, we've got a new mechanic in Outlaws of Thunder Junction called uh, whenever you commit a crime or whatever, right? I just wanted to make a joke, and I'm not taking credit for this joke because I've heard it on other podcasts. Uh, here, here's the thing. Uh, you target something, be it your opponent with a discard effect, a spell on the stack with a counter spell, a destroy or exile oh. spell on permanence, or a card in the graveyard. If a spell says target, it's a crime. Oh, oh. my. Oh, I just got... Oh, so you guys are just learning about this now? Yeah. I All just right. went from 9 to 12 so fucking fast. Here's the joke. Here's oh, the joke. Wow. Damn. Somebody from the commander R&D department got yeah. their way into the main sets. Yeah. Because... The most commander thing I've ever fucking heard in my life <laughs> is, is if you target my spell with anything, it's like you're committing a fucking crime. Yeah. You might as well be violating the Geneva Convention because I, you countered I, my spell. The what more the conjunction is revealed to me, like I saw Thibble, th what if? Thibble, 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 I saw Thibble, Thibble. Trinket Bones. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just say that? Uh -huh. uh, tiny Bones? Um, <laughs> <laughs> while he composes himself, so I have a question. <laughs> Does it still consider... 3D.exe is restarting. <laughs> Does, is it still committing... A, what if I cast uh, Legolas' quick reflection or uh, reflexes on my that opponent's would be a, That would be a crime. Uh, yeah, you commit a crime. 100%. How, how is that? <laughs> what do you mean? Have you ever played Commander with somebody? That's... Uh, it, they will tell you that you are committing a crime. So yeah, if you ever played Commander <laughs> ever, you could just look at a player and they'll be like, so what's in, wrong? So we're in yeah. the middle of war, right? Yeah. We're in the middle of a war. War crime. And I, and I hand you a, 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 a Glock 16 that with like a... No such thing as a Glock 16. That's the... That's the <laughs> I hand you... 17. Let's say 17. I mean, I think John Arrhenicus is the only I hand part you, that's I hand you. I hand you a but... boomstick that okay. has like 30, 30 shotgun shells in it. Okay. I, I just committed a crime by giving you a weapon? Wait. Hell yeah, you did. In war times? Well, I feel like this is needless. <laughs> but <I'll> just... <laughs> it is, but I had to. So, yeah, the description of this ability yeah. is... Whenever you cast a spell or activate an ability... If you target something an of an opponent... Or their stuff. Yeah, if you target an opponent's thing, yeah. you are committing so a crime. And I just, wanted to, I just wanted to <laughs> relay this joke to our community. That is the most commander thing I've ever heard in my life. It yeah. is. So let's go back to the list. Well, or unless you want to talk about this, right? Well, I just want to. We oh, have an example here. That yeah, might... the example here, duelist of the mind, is uh, Nathan Nathan Stoyer. Yeah. Uh, so when you win the world championship, yeah, you get the honor to be on a magic card. Yeah. And this is his. So when are we going to see? This is his card. When are we going to see a Tanner Cherry? Uh... This Saturday, I'm going to compete with my buddy Rocky, who was on uh, some episodes <laughs> prior. It'll be, uh, it'll be something like it's like a pair of cherries, right? It's like whenever a creature is faced with a creature with, with stronger power and toughness than this creature, yeah. it gets 10-10 and gets swollen. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so you get to design a card with Wizards, wizards R&D. And, yeah. and, and the cool thing about it, let's, let's click on this card. Yeah. Because he is, his, your likeness is put onto the card as well. Oh. They did that um, actually with uh, Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage it, was, was like it, the, the so it yeah. used to be it used to be the Magic Invitational. Yeah. If you won the Invitational, you got to be on a card. Now it's the World Championship That's that you cool. get to do. So the last one was Looks uh, like a nerd. Yeah. Obviously uh, showing Ahsoka. <laughs> Obviously showing on 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 screen here as well. Yeah. Um, Duelist of the mind. Uh, one yeah one blue one generic flying vigilance uh, star 
for power three. Flying Duelist pigeons. of the Mines power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. That's interesting. So he's a 1-3 on your turn. He's a 0-3 on your opponent's turn, most likely. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this ability only triggers once each turn. Ironic, this is immediately going into a Lundo. I, I mm. have something I want to say right now. Wizards, how dare you not make <laughs> champions legendary creatures? Ooh, no, 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 no. The, the reason they don't is because they want the cards to be competitive. I, so Fairy yeah, Mastermind, do you know yeah, Fairy yeah, Mastermind yeah. that came out uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. too long ago? That's Shota Yasuoka's? Yeah. Or is it Yo, you, 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 you Sorry, have the Yuta, goal to meet the challenge? No, no you, they, it's can it's they play competitive know, formats. It's not it. Singleton. Honestly, yeah. Susie right? said it made sense to me. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, it was, sorry. You, like Snapcaster as an example. Is Yuta yeah. Takahashi maybe? Sorry, am, am I saying the wrong person? It's one of the uh, the, the super OG Japanese guys. Anyway. Um, Pretty, how do I get back to your... What do you want? This is the, fumbling. The, the fumbling. West. There it is. Get, you know, you need Apple product. That's what you need. You, you know, know what? You need more Apple product. Um, you sound uh, well, like you work at the Apple store. <laughs> honestly, you know what? Perfect, perfect little nuance to throw in here because I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to take this. What? What are we? This is podcast. The uh, nineteen. 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 Baby. Uh, pod, the baby. Is podcast nineteen. You're watching history in the making here, folks. Oh, How quickly can somebody screw themselves out of a sponsorship forever? Apple, you suck. Your products are <laughs> decent in quality, but you're goddamn thieves. Yeah, you know what? You really fucked the bed when you stopped, like, you know, making the 100, 120 gig <clears throat> iPods. That was my life and religion. For Banning the resale. A long time, bro. Banning the resale of components so that people are forced to go through your company where you specifically upcharge for any level of repair. Why can't you make technology and like they did in the 60s? That's Just our fun. show. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Windows. Microsoft. Monster us. Um... Go ahead, you guys. Sony. No, I want Sony. <laughs> so we were, we were talking about this committed crime. I thought yeah. it was funny that it's, it's just committing a crime, targeting your permanence is, is the most commander thing I've ever heard. It is the most commander thing I've ever um, heard. That like card that. is awesome. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, like having having your face immortalized on a card. Like Nathan Storyer is like the crazy thing. Like shout out to Nathan. He's like a young dude mm -hmm. and he is quickly becoming one of the best players of all time oh yeah he, his record is insane quite, okay well record cool scoreboard so? like how Shh. like how so as in like how many winning, i'm a plebe here i don't know there's gonna be plebes even listening potentially he's winning and winning he's and winning, win winning he won the he won a pro tour he won the world championship he's like top eighting constantly he like slugging it out with the best people in the world and he's just always actually also I, one thing i got written is he, down is here he is lying well. to win <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no that was no. we already read it about that we don't yeah, need to bring that up that's <laughs> the last podcast. there's no such thing as lying to win in real like 60 card i still remember right? watching like, that that one game it was ravnica allegiance i think or uh it was the war of the spark era where uh Oh my God! Yeah, yeah Luis Scott Vargas. Yes, yes. Talking, yeah, yeah uh, L. So that was a pen trick yeah. when he. Wait, but no, I remember I was watching his hand. Or it was like it was something as simple as like oh, and but he was like oh, mm, and he just held back. No, yeah, he he reached over to grab the vampire token, suggesting that he was going to create a token with his legions landing, I see, yeah, which I was a feint. It yeah. was a fake out to yeah. mask the four mana instant he had in his hand, and it worked. Interesting. And it worked. And then the guy committed to the attack. And he tapped out four mana for Settle the Wreckage actually, to exile his board. Side tangent. It was just amazing. Wanna, I just want to throw this detail in. Do you think uh, Wizards will ever make that kind of conduct no, of absolutely not. obsolete? No, no of course not. It's what do you mean game. obsolete? Let, let's say uh, we had that uh, great famous drunken debate over in Saskatoon a little while ago where I, I famously... With, within us, at least. You know, no one else knows about this shit. Um, I really <laughs> wanted to support that some Magic Commander games can be played without politics. It is possible, but it's a one in 10 circumstance. And I wonder if on a competitive level, when it comes to that, if all you can do is play absolutely as efficiently as you can without any nuance of subtle psychological manipulation or yeah, warfare. You, and what I is said, it possible? What I said, yes, it's possible. What you're describing is a tournament. Well, you're I describing CEDH tournaments. You're not allowed to suggest what your opponent should do. It's against the rules. You're, you're not allowed. Not we're obviously watching it's, this, so, so in, it's in a, regards it's to politics, okay. you can play your turn how you want. You can't tell someone else what to do or how to do it or or incentivize them to do it because of... like it, It's actually like a judge infraction or whatever. Yeah. Well, okay. So that, that's what you're describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're describing I mean, going to a tournament and playing at a competitive level. Yeah, but I'm splitting the difference because in this situation, 
I'm hearing that you're kind of mentioning just like even when it comes to like the feigning thing. Yeah, like imagine as an like example. That is, that is the psycho- that's a pen trick. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Like let's the psychological imagine, warfare. Let's imagine just, like, there's can, no pen could he, have, could he have win if he didn't try yeah, to is there that. is there a chance that these competitive uh, circumstances <clears throat> don't require that? Dude, the, I want to shout out again right now to a um, podcast that no longer exists. It was the best podcast name for any magic podcast I've ever heard in my life is Scry Me a River. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, love yeah, those guys so much. Yeah. Riley Knight and uh, Dennis Straniak. They, they sort of tailed away from this thing, but it was like the best thing about the podcast at the beginning was uh, the power moves, mm-hmm. power moves of magic. They actually had LSV on the podcast to talk about shit he does to get in his opponent's head, right? Like part of the culture. And I'm, the, like the reason mm-hmm. I'm saying like what, to clap back at what you're saying, part of the culture is that there is slight intricacies of people who are ingrained in that, in that culture of competing at that level there's things that you can do to get in your opponent's head. Art of war, there's, baby. Yeah. There's things that you can do to Could gain I? an advantage. And like, dude, there was, there was one where it was in the, like, I would think the finals match of a, of a pro tour, the one player got up and went and walked over to a judge to talk to the judge and just like shot the shit with him for a second and then came back and sat down and he did it to try and make it seem to his opponent. He knew that if he did that, his opponent would think that he was asking a question about a certain card. It was like like five layer chess, uh-huh. right? And then sitting down, he didn't have the card. Mm-hmm. He but he knew that if he did that, that his opponent would be like, "Oh fuck, he's got this card." You know, and like those things are all within the legal boundaries. And it is crazy cool to hear people who are thinking on a level that is like way beyond what you can think of. Like taking that away is actually, I think, a, a negative. Weirdly enough, I think like in a moment like this, all's fair in humanity and war. Yeah. We're a fucked up people. <clears throat> Fuck it. Yeah. Why not? Actually, <laughs> shout out to uh, li- limited, <laughs> limited Resources, the, the draft podcast with Luis Scott Vargas and Marshall Sutcliffe. They actually have a segment that they call Genius or Grifter. <clears throat> and so they they will read. I'm gonna start speaking more gibberish when I play will... competitively. You think that's gonna work? I'm sorry to interject. You think that's gonna work? But and this is part of that whole nuance. Um, you don't have a poker face that I can't read. Yeah, but that's you. Man. That's you. Uh, well, Everyone, every time I'm in front of anybody who does not know how to comprehend this, tends it's, to, to like. Oh, it's. Oh, it's the They're best. Like <laughs> it's literally, it's the best thing ever to watch like people My who haven't played with him or even just games. friends that have played a ton, but just don't know how to read him when yeah. they're like sitting there quivering because they're like oh, expecting when he's come. And I'm literally sitting there being like, I'll shoot him a glance. He'll shoot it back. And I'm like, you've got nothing in your hand. You got nothing. Or, or <laughs> the complete opposite. And he's like, I hate you. I hate you. And then he'll start talking to the table. And I'm like, or, or the other way. Sometimes we'll have that, that subtle allegiance and you'd be like, okay. Do you boo? I got shit. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> so. yeah. So so many times where I look over and I just see the like the little glint in his eye, and it's like, okay, everybody, we or, need to or come I'm doing this. like right now. <laughs> like, okay, well, anyway, so this yeah. this segment, genius or grifter, yeah. is fucking incredible because they'll like, they'll explain a scenario, and then they have to basically like rationalize with morals or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? Is this a genius move <laughs> or is it a dick move? Like, are you a grifter? Like, are you like the bottom of the bucket? And sometimes it's like really obvious. Sometimes it's a very fine line. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I love it. Like there's things in competitive magic where I, I had a moment that was not too long ago. And I mean this. So I was playing with, it was with the game with uh, Jenim, Cody and Dylan. And there was literally two Cyrus on the stack. That's gross. And I was playing, he did two and Kyrie. I had the one, uh, it was a, uh, it was the one counter spell from that for the new Cabana set that had casualty on it. And so I was like, okay, I want a, a sack Make trigger no matter what. Either my Hidetsugu is going to blink and I lose what was uh, Peering to the Abyss on the top. Mm-hmm. Or I say, screw that. I have the first chance in my entire career as a Magic player to counter not, not two, but even one on the same stack. And I loved it. And the guy next to me was like, "Why? Why would you do that?" He was he was so flustered. Mm-hmm. And then the guy who, frankly, had cast the first side rift didn't fuck with me for several turns, and that won me the fucking game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just saying. Oh yeah. So chaos sometimes does benefit. Oh, Just yeah. saying. Absolutely. It does. Um, so yeah. I've. <clears throat> unless you've got unless you've got more on that. What were we talking about? We we tangented so hard there. Well, we were talking about. Oh yeah, we we, we kind of yeah, just we, got off. Well, full we, topic. we started with commit a crime. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, well, you were you you were talking about uh, the one podcast that was talking about uh, Scrammy Gen- River, Scrammy Genius River, yeah. or Grifter. Yeah, Genius or Grifter. No, that's actually limited resources. Yeah, um, yeah. 
I don't know if you had more. No, no, I'm good. So um, I, I'm just very curious oh, about this. Brandon, we've, this, this. We've got this, this in relates. the notes. Whoa. We've got this. I, I believe, we've got this. Doing? You're touching all I, sorts of shit. Oh. You're touching suggested things hey, to Apple type. Product. John, what are you doing? See this? This is the keyboard button. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, this, this relates <laughs> to this This one thing I wrote down relates to you heavily. <laughs> da, da, da Vinci Swole. Yeah. I do believe okay. it means a, 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 something to do with like a, like a renaissance kind of like pornography. Are you, are you, are you, are you calling me a Loki genius? Oh, shut up. No. I, <laughs> you will see on your screen one of here. The, one, of, one of the most respected <laughs> magic inventors of all time. <laughs> Fucking Brandon. Um, <clears throat> none of these about a you, man, Brandon. A okay, man, you'll a see man, on the screen. A man who stole... <laughs> I'm, 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 are you gonna let are, me? Are, are, are you calling me a man who who steals b- bodies to uh, to dissect and and? You just said it was kind of about it me. It relates to you, yeah. If you let me talk, I'll get there. I'll okay, get there. Okay, okay. So on screen, you will see uh, soon here covering this man's face. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a. Uh, it's, it's actually it's funny because it's a set that you said that you weren't really a fan of. Assassin's Creed oh, yeah. universe is beyond. So excited now. I'm actually so excited now. Well, so one cool thing about Assassin's Creed is that they they've really just like been like, you know what? Screw it. This shit's happening on Earth. It's happening to Bob. Gross. Like it's it's happening in <clears throat> New York and Egypt. Lame. So we've got a card called Leonardo da Vinci. Eh. And we've got a card called Cleopatra. Legendary creatures based oh, on real Cleopatra people. is broken. Yeah, no, no, no. We're talking about Leonardo yeah. da Vinci. What do you? I know. You I know. I'm just saying. I'm just. Okay. I'm just clarifying your statement there because I saw Cleopatra and I was like, right, so oh does, man, I want to make do? that. Well, I'll, I'll continue. Okay. Yeah. Brady's going off on a tangent here. I, I, so Leonardo da Vinci is now going to be a card in magic in in the real world. This was a, a real person in human history. I, the, okay. I'm saying that it relates to you in a certain way. And okay. I'm like, okay, okay. We're working towards this. Oh, how I many see. power and toughnesses does Leonardo da Vinci have? A three, three. How many does a grizzly bear have? Two, I guess. So does this not prove the debate that Leonardo da Vinci could rip a fucking grizzly bear in half with his bare hands? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it does. Maybe. <laughs> For the nuance of you the... You constantly <laughs> say that you could fight a grizzly bear and win. For, for the... It, it, <laughs> folks, by the way... I'm sorry it took so long to get my there. My boy, he can, apparently. <laughs> See, this, every, this, every time people bring this up, it's so out of context. You should never have gone so deep into that rabbit hole as you did, though. I, oh, you know what? Live, you on the, li- live, live on the podcast. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we got it on podcast. We got it <laughs> stamped real, on the, baby, on the internet. Real. For years now, I've been under the impression... Just, you know, weird little thing, weird little act out of like, you know, every kid, every teenager, whatever is like, oh, yeah, I could do like impossible things. Or I could do that sort of thing. I can't yeah, remember how it all you started. You made a very bold claim that you could fight a grizzly bear and win. I, I'm i not saying it's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I've been dealing with for years. Everybody's just like, it's either, it's either. It I mean. To, no, no, no. It either has to be 100% or nothing. And then the whole argument goes into like this huge joke of like, no, you can't, blah, blah, blah. You're probably going to die. My whole stipulation was, I'd like the opportunity to try. I'm never going to go out of my way, but I think that the majority of people probably could... On your could, deathbed, please. Probably could go out of their way and fight a grizzly bear, potentially fight a tiger, potentially fight any of these big, nasty beasts Apex out there Apex predators, I will reiterate. The very specific <laughs> hey. point that I said when I first brought this up is that... I would like the chance to fight a grizzly bear. Give me <laughs> nothing but a military grade oh. knife. Give me nothing but a military grade knife, and like the ability to like not have it just like oh I'm dropped into a field and it's already fucking bull so, charging me. Well, uh, what sort- I want to say is my boy here ain't no predator, but he definitely apex. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll support. So the- three hundred thousand years. Yes, I actually just had this conversation with my family. Three hundred thousand years of modern humans existing on a biological sense. I'm sorry. The last couple hundred we've had guns. What did we do the entire time before that? We fucking murdered bears and lions and tigers. Oh my! Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. That was uh, guns. We all. Guns haven't existed for that long. Want to know what we had back then? We had wood with oh, a yeah. sharp rock on the end. Yeah, but that was you're multiple humans. Me, you're telling me that a man with a bow and an arrow that's made out of a flimsy ass, not compound bow, flimsy ass goddamn like tree is going to be able to fight and for been able well, and had done. You're saying that a man with a military grade knife meant built to cut through Kevlar doesn't stand even a remote chance about fighting a bear. Uh, fighting a bear, the, the, my, what my introduction is, is 
winning or losing against that bear? Will I, you deal damage? Yes. Will that thousand pounds consume you? Most likely, and on average, yeah. they always have. All I need. Multiple humans hunting bears have been successful. Exactly. But notoriously, I, bears have always been unfucked with. And you can go on the internet right now and spend exactly five seconds <laughs> searching. <laughs> Man kills bear. Man fights bear. Man fights off grizzly bear. You want to know what you're going to find? Billions, you're going to find videos of people. I want to see God billions. Out of, out of the billions of humans. Okay. All I, I need. All I need. I'm sorry. And we'll get off this topic. All I need is one good in into the head and it's done. Did it, honestly. It's done. Like, and likewise. This, even in this, I, mean, the, it, I do agree done. with that. It does, I do agree with that. It's all you need. Okay. So I, the reason I brought that up is because just the conversation I remember just on one of the podcasts I was listening to, somebody yeah. was just like, "Why the fuck is Leonardo da Vinci a three three? Yeah, it's like wasn't he like a like a, a bright like, pushing bitch? Yeah, yeah. Like, like we're talking about one one he human may have been. human tokens are like one ones, right? Yeah, but he humans lived. generally. I mean, yeah, this and that. Yeah, Leonardo he, da Vinci wasn't known for his pecs and his swole ass like well, rip rip curls, right? Hey, historians who potentially follow us, let us know if we're wrong if. Leonardo ain't actually that swole baby. He, he designed and built and innovated and, and he invented. may have also potentially invented the first fucking goddamn dildo. We can't prove that right now in this moment. So uh, to to that specific point, because we're already way off the rails. <laughs> um, first of all, we're talking about a man who lived during the Renaissance. Yes, B right after the the bubonic plague. Before bears were invented. Before bears were invented. <laughs> right after the bubonic plague. Right. Um. This is a man who lived into older age for what was the time. He yeah. did, actually. No, straight up. Props gonna, to Da Vinci, yeah. <laughs> absolutely he was. So Privilege old. will keep Every, you alive and longer. And that's part of my whole fight the bear point. The in Let's say the last, like, hundred years of human society. We've gotten soft. Absolutely <clears throat> we've gotten soft. We've gotten our lazy boy recliners. We're driving our cars everywhere. You want to know what this man did every single day? Probably walked, like, ten miles just to get his groceries. And then he'd go home in, in in literally like the world coming out of what was a cesspool that killed the majority of Europe. I'm sorry, everybody back in those days Damn. was fit and sh There's videos of you can find of modern- I did not expect this to yeah, 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 just yeah. tangent this I, hard. <laughs> you, can, you can find modern day like little old ladies that are like 60, 70, 80 years old that are hauling like 800 pounds of like grain and rice uphill. I had a buddy back in the day who was like, I could do that. And it's like, no, you goddamn can't. You can barely lift your stereo yeah, over we, your head. Yeah, we definitely did get soft. That's dad talk from Brando. We, we definitely well, You know what ain't soft? soft? Yeah. My dick right now for the art of this card. Actually, <laughs> I'm just realizing. This card. Fucking Wang Lee. Holy shit. You put yeah, some sex art. appeal in this Da Vinci. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. All right, let's go. And on top of that, this is Urza on crack. Until end of turn, thought readers you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. So there's a lot of things you could just start to do to abuse that immediately and for two uh with a blue and a tap draw a card and the discard a card if the discarded card was an artifact card exile it from your graveyard if you do create a token that's a copy of it well i guess fuck yourself light steel but anyways mm -hmm. create yourself a copy of it except it's a zero two thopter artifact creature with flying additions with other types oh god yeah artifacts da Vinci's a cool card did not yeah. need this card i will say i don't know if there's a uh, i do not know if there's yet an image of it but they did say that for leonardo da vinci and cleopatra mm -hmm. these like historic figures these serialized versions and we actually we had this discussion about the arabrask about like them kind of dropping the ball with oh, serialized yeah, versions yeah. being non-unique yeah they're, they're like they're just they just have a number on them but the, you can get them in the same version without the serialized I mean, I'm an so, fan, so I'll always hold disagree, on but yeah. what i'm saying is they went the right route with these. There will be a very small amount of serialized nice. Da Vinci's and Cleop Cleopatra's so and other historical of figures. We're going to look at what, well, I, I don't know the number, but what I'm saying is that every single one of them is, is mm -hmm. going to be unique and they will all be in the language that the person spoke. Oh, Damn. that's cool. That, yeah, see, yeah, now that that's, is honoring that's cool. the flavor and the nuance of what apparently Hasbro is trying to do with, with this oversaturation of content. Yeah, so that those is are going to be pretty cool. Pretty um, cool. I really that, do appreciate that a cool. lot. Yeah, I, I, man, universe is beyond. I guess maybe we'll segue we into talking about. Go back uh, for a second. Oh, uh, da, da, oh da. Thopters. I was gonna. Thopters make sense. I was. I, yeah. I thought that was a buff to himself as well. I was gonna be like, see, he can get even smaller. 
Um, yeah, so what are we at? We're at uh, forty actually, minutes. Can historically, get any more swole? Frankly, can I also I can I also know. say because the reason I railroaded you at the beginning of you trying to make that joke? <laughs> yeah, you. I was um, like, where are we going with this? <laughs> is because you, I didn't know you were going to make a joke, but instantly I can't remember. I th- it might have been the card market guys. Um, there was another group. There was like like just a couple of weeks ago that had this exact same discussion. They were talking about magic cards and like how like the power and toughnesses don't make sense. And somebody was being like mm-hmm. a one one human. And it's like, like, it, like real world. Like, if, like, if you were a magic card, what would your power and toughness be, sort of thing? And the one guy's just like, well, he's like, you'd have to be a one one. And the dude's like, of course, I'm not a one one. And he got yeah, all yeah, offended because all... it's just like, so you're gonna say a one one little, like a snake token. You're gonna talk a little bunny token. You're gonna talk a little sapling, little little mushroom that's sentient. Those are one ones. You're gonna tell me that I'm as weak as a little mushroom. Oh, I that, step this on is a that. whole new topic. We could we could do a whole episode on this because oh, the 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 imbalance Bobby? of like, come on, like a one one rat token. Compared to or a, a one, one one squirrel. I'm glad we're talking about that because for a moment there, I thought we were about to discuss no. about Brandon fighting bears. No, no, no. no. We're we're talking about the fact <laughs> that the, the age old discussion, the age old discussion of I attack you with my Emrakul. Okay, I block with thirteen squirrels, bitch. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I love <laughs> right? that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. thirteen that squirrels. It wasn't. Squirrels. Could not kill Emrakul. It wasn't squirrels. It was. But well, it was there was. And I, mean, I was like, yeah. All right. Next thing I want to talk about um, <clears throat> the pro tour, pro tour of murders at Karlov Manor. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Good God, I I, was good. I don't know, like, I will say, I feel like I, ever since I got into Magic, I've been really, really into watching the Pro Tours, like the the big competitive Magic broadcasts. I usually post in the groups and stuff, like our mm-hmm. local Magic groups being like, guys, the fucking draft is happening, or like the, the Pro Tours happening, and like nobody says a thing. I don't think anybody's ever responded. I don't know if anybody really cares, like, as much, right? Like, I, I, I exist in much more of, like, a commander pod kind of group, and I'm only now learning, like, meeting people in the in the 60-card kind of the, <laughs> the sphere, right? But I've always loved watching the, the, the Pro Tour. This one was probably the best one I've ever watched in my life because um, much, like, much like the friggin' sweater I'm wearing with the Philadelphia Eagles, isn't it great to, if your team makes a Super Bowl, I mean, it lost... <laughs> right, like the Eagles make the Super Bowl get second place, but my the deck that I love to play in Pioneer, Boros, Sorry, Boros heroic. Yeah, shout out to Brian from Into the Ninety Nine, fellow Eagles fan. Oh, yeah, he's um, good. anyway, Boros heroic is the deck that I played. If you've seen uh, our face to face vlog video that we put out where I was uh-huh. ripping on some heroic Pioneer, having uh-huh. a grand old time. It's nuts watching one of the best players in the world pilot your deck to the finals of a Pro Tour. Yeah. And the crazy thing is uh, Simon Nielsen, um, mad cheers. He broke a record doing it. Not His really. fourth yep. Pro Tour top eight in a row. Four Pro Tours in a row he made it into top eight. That has never been done. And he did it with Boros that Heroic. That is statistically so fucking impressive. It is oh, yeah. unreal. And also Simon Nielsen is the craziest, quirkiest, nicest most charismatic. He is so much fun to watch. Even the way there was a match he had. So he's from uh, Denmark and one of his other buddies, best friend made it into the top eight as well. When they, when, when they did the announcements of them walking out on stage, like reading the names who got in the top eight, the two of them jumped out and just started like air humping each other. Like they were just like (laughs) having so much fun. And then when they (laughs) inevitably had to play each other in the, in the top eight in the finals on Sunday, clutch. They, the one guy, he like wrote out on a piece of paper. He's like, Danes don't block. And every time, every time he didn't block, he just like slapped the paper on the table in front of him. Just like, I don't block. And like the two of them were just having the best time of their lives. Cause they're like, dude, that. one of us is going oh, God, further, is... but one of us is having like the, the time of our lives. They were so charismatic. I really, really Honestly, that is for me so some of the best. That is mm-hmm. peak attitude in this. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was charming. That it is... was so heartwarming to watch these two friends. Oh, God. Just no, slug it out. That's and and then especially like when, whenever they threw the paper down, like, I don't block. And like, it was it was just amazing. But then Simon Nielsen took it all the way to the finals, man. He took Boros Heroic. Uh, uh, he had to play against the, what I would like to talk about here next is the, what hasn't happened in like, God, who, as, especially as long as I've been playing, there's always been this, this fabled like, um, a pro tour figures out a deck that nobody saw. nobody's figured yeah. out yet, and it's been lurking in the in the background, mm-hmm. and then a team gets together. Pro tours do this. Pro mm-hmm. tours push teams to go like. Uh, think tank Mm -hmm. and they think tank so hard that all one of them is like wait a minute I think somebody's missing something here and they cracked it they found the best deck in the format that nobody was playing yeah 
and they didn't even test it online. So there was no record of anybody playing this deck. And their t- the t- Team Channel Fireball showed up to the Pro Tour playing Rakdos Vampires, and people were like, Rakdos, what? Like, what do you mean? And they rolled. Like, half the top eight was Rakdos Vampires, and uh, uh, Seth Manfield, who's probably in, in the running now for one of the best Magic players ever, he won it against Boros Heroic. But, like, the deck is nuts. It uses uh, Sorin Imperius Oligarch, I believe is the name of the card. Mm-hmm. It was hot when Pioneer was brand new, but the it, it has a it has a minus ability of you play Sorin for two and a black, and then you can minus it with its Planeswalker ability to put a vampire from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah. And there were just there just wasn't like a big payoff for it at the beginning. Yeah. There was Champion of Dusk, which was okay, but then they printed Vein Ripper. Mm-hmm. On screen now. <clears throat> Uh, Blood Artist <laughs> Don't show grew up. of me Jeez, <laughs> Blood it. Artist grew up and now he fucks <laughs> Now he fucks and I guess Blood I said Artist, stop it <laughs> I said stop it He's now a <laughs> like a what a 6-5 f- flyer and now it's a double Blood Artist trigger Oh yeah yeah It's yeah, insane yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one. a 6-drop vampire know, I, I, I still, still think Blood Artist is stronger just for its mana cost. Like it, is, mana cost. it is, for its mana yeah, cost Blood, Ar- Blood Artist is a two drop. Yeah. But you yeah. also get a 6-5 flying body that if they remove it, they take two. Yeah. Right? Like, it, you, there's like a... Man, it's it's is, just a is, good card. It's, it's well balanced. Is Reanimator well healthy in, in uh, Modern and Pioneer? I think, yeah. I think those, so they've like always that, been a healthy... So, yeah, Vayne Ripper would be really juicy then for the format right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, cool. it's good That's in Pioneer. Awesome. Not quite good enough for Modern. Yeah, I still don't play enough 60 card formats, but I like just, you know... The, the best part about it, Continue. the reason and like the cool thing about Pro Tours, the cool thing about like high high level competitive magic is I think one of the best, the, the main reasons that this deck just like vein ripped the tournament <clears throat> is because nobody saw it coming. Nobody's mm-hmm. sideboards were tuned against it. You, you got to You got to say it for what it is. Ripping the assholes, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Ripping the assholes. Oh my God. Anyway, big old, ouch. big old. <laughs> ouch. Anyways. <laughs> Ouchie. Um, I, I just wanted reach. to, I just wanted to comment on how fucking good this pro tour was to watch you were um, you were so cute and i kept coming up you're like yo, know, like this is yeah, like the most sports to the TV. ball yeah no yeah. fuck the eagles no you were like glued okay <laughs> yeah it was it was categorically one of the best pro tours i think i've ever seen i i just man it's it's so good especially like like shout out to wizards the, the broadcast team the uh I mean, uh, shout out to Wizards of the North, local here. They like uh, uh, Alias V, like uh, Ailey. She's local now, and they, we, she, we want to meet her. Yeah, but she she was one of the broadcasters, and she's had to get like brought up to spec on on what was hot in Pioneer, right? Mm-hmm. And the Wizards of the Coast, or sorry, Nor- Wizards of the North guys did some games, like recorded some episodes with her here to get her ready, and like yeah, her and uh, Corey Baumeister or whatever. Oh my God, they they make a, a an incredible broadcasting couple. It was just, it was so, it was so good. To interrupt, isn't Elias V originally from uh, South Africa? South Africa, I believe, yes. That's a, that's a tremendous, like, transition. Like, let's just leave Africa to come to Canada. That's really exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly. I don't know where, I don't know where she lived before coming here, but I think recently Calgary? I, for as long as I've watched Elias on, on, on YouTube, they always had a very distinct accent that I was always trying to Mm -hmm. decipher. Like, where the heck is that coming from? And no matter what, their plays are always amazing too. Yeah. Shout out to Elder Dragon hijinks as well. Yeah. Show that, uh, it's just, it's just good. Uh, good. There's really a, good. an episode recently that uh, that they did at the Commander at Home studio yeah. with uh, Olivia Gobert Hicks and Day Nine. Do you guys know Day Nine? Sean, whatever. Oh, I can't remember oh, yeah, his I've last name. Sean. God, he's so funny. Every fucking word he says is so funny. And that episode is incredible. He's playing the Oger or O'Hare, uh, the red one. Mm-hmm. The the deck had like a forty five dollar budget, and he murdered what oh, yeah. just incredible damn. Which go, anyway, just goes to prove you, you yeah, do not need here. money you do not need money to win in this game it is not yeah. it can be it's not really a pay to win game Ooh. okay this next topic uh, i, I want to get your guys' reaction on this. i, I want to spearhead this one frankly well do you know what i'm referencing well, I'm, what i'm looking at right now is arena well hey you're gonna you're gonna bury the lead by just reading the thing no no what frankly I have for a while always struggled with Arena. It has uh, am- many amazing things going for it, but frankly, the approach to well, like, no, my, what my I mean by with it are always pretty, you know, strained. And now they've been making humongous changes that I'm incredibly excited about. But do you know what the change that I'm talking about? Like, yeah, multiplayer formats. 
okay, hold on. I'm I'm gonna bring up the card because <laughs> there's there's no. I just I just wanted to segue that because I want you to take the reins. But I, I I'm no no <laughs> honestly I'm I'm aware of some of the changes going on. You have way more of a tension to go with it. But I am. What are you okay? Thrilled. So I'm gonna let as a non arena player. No, hundred percent. Like I have I'm gonna let Brandon game. read this card. Now I will I will say like sorry this 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 is an alchemy card. Um, <clears throat> I'm not an alchemy lover. But they previewed a card coming in one of the new sets. I'll let Brandon read it. It's on screen here. It's called Juggle the Performance. <laughs> um, tickle my ball sack. Oh, my God. Uh, Rakdos, Rakdos and one. Uh, each player... Uh, it's Rakdos too. Each e- each player um, gives Can me all of read? their possessions. <laughs> What's going on? <sighs> trying to be silly each player <laughs> discards their hand then conjures a duplicate of each of seven random cards from the library of the player to their right into their hand the duplicates perpetually gain mana of any type can be spent to cast this spell arena well Help is there anything me. in there that you that you notice that's kind yeah, of yeah to the player to their right player to their right yeah which so means this this card got spoiled recently and yeah. they didn't say a damn thing about anything else yeah but it's the card says conjure from the player from your right I mean, if we've learned anything, and it does basically mean that we're getting multiplayer, but if we've learned anything from how they word cards sometimes, um, I'm looking at the Rebel Commander that we kind of started this whole podcast in, like, first first recording on. Um, they don't word their cards oh, the best the one that sometimes. We, whenever frankly, you, whenever each or whatever turn you attack. And it's like, it, it worded in a way where it's like, am I attacking with my creatures on other players' turns? Yeah, right. We did get that kind of... What I can contribute to this is that there is like myself, number of players who don't play arena because it's not multiplayer. And I have heard more than once that this has been an ongoing debate as to whether or not nope. Wizards has been actively trying to meet that that demographic. And frankly, this just clarifies it. I did not go into this podcast expecting this to be on our notes. And for the fact that this to be a thing seems pretty freaking so cool. It's Arena's going to be making some pretty big changes right now. If the yeah. wording of the card... Explains says, the card. Yeah, it says to it their right. It also yeah, yeah, hints yeah. at what's going to be happening. Just yeah. like we we uh, hinted out at battles with Atraxa, we mi- failed miserably at our predictions. Yeah. No matter what, we did. We suck. We are bad podcasters. If, yeah. if on arena it says player to the right, what the fuck does that mean? That pl- that so explains can itself. I, uh, the card as it's worded works perfectly fine in one v one. Yeah. Because the player to your right, you you can still go in clockwise rotation. Yeah. I. A lot of people are like wondering whether or not this is actually a suggesting, like suggesting that they're going to be working with a multiplayer. But like, well, okay, we got to talk about all of the things that that entails. Mm-hmm. Arena hardly works as it is. <laughs> Can't confirm. Right? Now, it also is a mobile game. There is no way. There has to be a PC only for this, right? I don't think so. Oh, maybe let me, there's let some me, upgrade. Maybe, how, maybe you're... Just, Maybe I'll put there's like as simple right? as a bunch of guys behind a computer fixing a lot of the issues that are going on. Okay, so maybe well, Hasbro I mean, is using all their money. And that's exactly what I was going to say. To actually make this work. So no, and exactly that. Supply it's like demand. Hasbro. What? It's been a year and a half ish that Hasbro has been like in functional ownership of Wizards of the what? Coast. No, has it been longer? No, two and a way half, like longer. Years? No, way three? longer. It was. I looked it up. It's actually Hasbro's on Wizards of the Coast for a long time. I looked it up. It. It. it it's actually like. Wizards of the Coast is more responsible for their their douchebaggery than than a lot of people yeah. give them credit well, for. Oh, yeah. oh no, I've seen Facebook <laughs> algorithms for um, comments. Either either way, either way, um, I'm kind of surprised about that. I thought it was more recent. I thought it was only like the last couple of years that they really had the uh, the buyout. No, when did Hasbro buy Watsi? What? September ninety nine. Oh, nineteen oh, ninety nine. Yeah, no, so it's back in the- yeah. September 1999. That's a lot farther back than I thought it was. Bought Wizards of the Coast for $325 million. Jesus. That's way... Yeah. Then what was the whole shabeel of like two-ish years ago when everybody was like, oh no, it's literally it Twitter, been... man. It's oh, just Twitter. Just, People just... are dumb. Yeah, okay. I'm just, like, I, I'm pointing. I'll take. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm pointing this out because Hasbro has been behind Wizards of the Coast for 25 years. Yeah. yeah. Like, 25 like years, it, yeah. it is not Hasbro's fault. Hasbro, like whatever, they're they're whatever. Like Wizards of the Coast is their biggest earner now. Yeah. Um, but they are still responsible for a lot of what they're doing. And I mean, the, like actually, Mark Rosewater was challenged recently about like why why is why the fuck are you making commander desks commander decks from Modern Horizons <laughs> three? <laughs> and like it was this massive vitriol. And like I will say right now, yeah, they have made commander decks for every standard set yep. 
for the past how many goddamn years since Ikoria or whatever, yep. nobody bitches about the fact that they're making commander decks that aren't legal in standard. Why is it such a problem now that they're making commander decks for Modern Horizons 3 when they're not legal in Modern? Like, just get over it. They, they, they know that the commander decks are going to sell. They're doing it's their business. They're doing it because it's going to make money. They know that it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's not a controversy. It's not a controversy. Yeah. They're a business. They're making cards. I, I don't get it. There's so Twitter sucks. Twitter like sucks the internet yeah, yeah. sucks. Everybody's mean, sorry, everybody's sorry, so sorry. mad about you everything. Mean X. <laughs> no, I you don't. Mean X. Well, that's what no, it is. That's you mean you is, mean yeah. Musk? Just um, call her what it is. <laughs> call it Musk. Um, either way, either way. Yeah, so yeah. Bringing this back. Bringing this back. Um, so arena and multiplayer. Um, not surprised. It's about time. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly that. They Honestly, probably, no. They, there they has probably, been a lot of demand for it from a lot of people. Yeah. Well, and they've like probably did put in, or hopefully at least put in the money and the man hours to like really fix it. Because it's been a long issue of just one v ones. But it is a natural step. A long issue of one v ones. That was the whole design. Well, no. I mean, like a long. The fact that arena has barely worked. Yeah, just yeah, okay. in the term of it's only been one like one v ones, but when Arena was still kind of like gaining popularity because Arena's not super old. Yeah, um, it was um, Ixalan, I believe, was yeah. when it debuted. Yeah, because um, it was basically it basically launched, and then they did uh, shortly after they brought in Brawl as a potential format, and mm -hmm. it, it was live there. It makes sense, a lot Which, of sense. The for format them to move remains to healthy on Arena. Yeah. The only thing, um, specifically here, because it's in the notes, uh, is it going to be a flop for various reasons? I don't think it's going to be a flop, but it requires one of two things. Mm. And this might be... I will exactly, expand on that why I wrote that. And this is going to be potentially how this gets played out. Might be exactly what you've been asking for in terms of uh, multiplayer format of... The ability to communicate on Arena is absolute garbage, and part of the reason that they've done that is obviously for the notion to protect of people, pr to protect people, to avoid people from being like salty or this or that, and like swearing or this and that. Um, they might still keep it that way, where you can be like, "Your turn, haha, -ha, oops," which I really hope that Karn they, crowd surfing. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that if they make it multiplayer, they take that out. It doesn't have to be like actually typing messages but give us like give us 30 words instead of four this please. actually lends to why i please. why i wrote down is it going to be a flop for various reasons yeah. uh, i will say that my my thought process in that area is i think that they're trying to cater to commander or multiplayer for for arena because commander is the most popular thing Absolutely. i don't think it's the most popular thing in digital i think it's the most popular thing in paper i think it's the most popular thing in casual i think it's poker night for the boys or, or, yeah. you know, or whoever the, sorry not excluding women I, I i think it's it's a private or a personal thing that we that we we yeah. all love to share with people across the table yeah I think that if Arena goes and, and, and puts it all in, in the bucket and, and be like, all right, we got Commander on Arena now, most people are going to try it and be like, this is like, the UI sucks. Yeah. I don't uh, this is frustrating, and I can't even talk to my opponents in what... Eh, I don't I don't care. And I think it might be a flop with like, it might not actually have many players. I like, it might not do well. I think it's going to do fine. I don't know if they're really going to bring Commander... And I almost kind of hope that they don't bring Commander, even though they probably are if they're bringing multiplayer. Um, well, they can't really bring the Commander format to Arena without putting the entire card pool on there. Exactly, which is why I don't think that they're really going to bring Commander, but even just for something like Brawl, where it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I guess we it have would be... all of this. Um, it's not going to flop, and I'll tell you exactly one reason why. Is because this is Hasbro, which is the coast. This is them as a company sitting back and be like, we're not making money off of Spell Table. Everybody loves their spell table these days. Spell table has so many bugs. Though. Exactly. So when you're a multi-billion and, dollar... and it's wizards. No, it... Exactly. So when you're a multi-billion dollar corporation that no people want to play or at least have the notion of wanting to play remotely, oops! Now they've got their hand in that pocket, and I don't know why they didn't just do this to begin with. It's it's kind of frankly a little bit what, lazy. Do multiplayer know? to begin with? Well, okay. Here's my take on it. We have had amazingly, <clears throat> and let's not bring in things like EA games and buggy bullshit EA issues that sports. many games that in the have game. been plagued in the past there are many sophisticated engines out there that can support a lot of this and i feel like mtg something, no i'm, I feel like I'm arena, actually i feel like arena has lacked the budget because they don't give a shit they, I'm actually gonna if, if there is out. money there is there is enough drive in the world that we live in to make it perfect and when it comes to the internet especially when it comes to arena Outside of what hackers, I'm assuming there is so many ways to make this game brilliant, and they just haven't done it. 
they, there are so many formats that could literally meet the masses in so many different ways. I know for a fact that there are many people who don't play 60 format, uh, uh, 60 card, 60 carded formats that just avoid arena because frankly, regardless if, if it's dry, you really want that, 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 that feel, you know, you want to be able to feel the cardboard between your fingers and be able to look at the, the opponent's face while you say, fuck you, you know, regardless of that, there has always been this agency, this, this means to make something way better than it is and at the end of the day i feel like they've just fucked the boat more than once and well, they just now that they've been able to finally introduce some things and they've i think they they've, they've dabbled with some things like alchemy and blah 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 frankly if, if alchemy was its own cardboard format se separate can't be in its own legality mm -hmm. separate it from its own legality be. from magic the gathering just print the cards as they are. It doesn't no, matter it if you're can't. Playing online. It can't. The whole reason that alchemy exists is because they're doing things that you cannot, you literally cannot do in paper. You can only do with digital cards. Alchemy how is so? a form of... How so, real quick. How so, as in um, conjure uh, this, or like, like, well, have you looked into like the cards and like the way, the, the whole reason that alchemy was I, designed... I know, the big one, I know the big one that broke the game that people got pissed off of is like conjure the nine into your deck. Like right, nine, so what like that, that what that does is it creates new objects and shuffles them into your deck. So is that impossible in paper? It sort of is. There, there's, regards there's, the one I already did that with Black Lotus. No, you, you can have a token, right? That's what it means. No, con, so conjure, conjure means create a card, like create a card. Yeah. So your, your deck now has Infinite actually... Infinite tokens. There's, no, I, no, 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 no. I can see an answer to, to many of this. Okay, you know? we could bring up like a, a multitude of other examples. The entire reason that alchemy exists yeah. is so that they could do what Hearthstone does. They could do oh, okay. shit. Well, in that case, they, they could okay, do yeah, shit yeah, that, that is sense. only available, is only possible on digital. You yeah. can't do it with paper. Yeah. So that's the entire no. reason that alchemy exists. My neurodivergent yeah. brain is like, if you can do it on digital and you can do it on paper, you can well, probably I'll find tell a you, medium. Well, the, the one of the, the, end of the, the day, we're humanity. We've been able to do a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. It's not impossible to make this impossible. Okay. One of the main reasons. Not impossible to make it possible. Sorry. <laughs> one, sorry. One of the main reasons that alchemy exists is so that if they want, then this is the main reason that alchemy exists. If they want to change what, how many loyalty counters it takes to uptick or downtick mm -hmm. Oko, they can just change that. Mm -hmm. in, in alchemy, it is a minus two instead of a minus one. Oh, it okay. is. Well, you can't change pardon, that in paper. Pardon my ignorance. Right? Yeah. I definitely yeah. So didn't know that. Yeah, alchemy sure. is the digital augmentable editable format, mm -hmm. and it does stuff. It does stuff with your hand. It does stuff with conjuring cards. It does stuff with... Um, I uh, still think you could do that in paper. It just takes no, way you, more steps. So, okay, way some more steps. stuff you, you can. Some stuff I like will unsets, say... Like you know, like, like stickers and... You know, I mean, real, like some realistically... Stuff, you know, you could and anything that alchemy does and like i've seen a lot of it because i've been playing a lot of arena recently like there's nothing that is in alchemy that you couldn't functionally do in paper cardboard it just becomes a lot more convoluted when well, you say that well it's like it's it's, it's kind of like the planes chase thing right if you don't have the planes chase cards it makes it a lot harder to play it um it's like conjure the nine into your deck if you have the nine cards you buy your little alchemy pack at the store and it's got the power nine proxies in there so you can just be like Ooh, those actually there. here I'll, I'll, I'll one thing that that alchemy does is um what does it do it augments a card mm -hmm. permanently persistently yeah so you can shuffle that card back into your deck it will still have ward two on it yeah you can't do that in paper. It's you, not You literally have paper. to sharpie no, the, you can do the it words paper. on it's that just, particular it, card. It's right? going to be hard. No, no, no. It's, it would, it's, it's, it's possible. possible. You can use a sleeve. It's just it's, no, one, no one wants to. There's no age, There's no There's it, no reality yeah. in which that is probably fun unless yeah. you it, are the one in ten that is not one in it, ten. Yeah, it wouldn't, you know? be, it wouldn't be impossible, but it's made it's so it's, it's much made work. difficult because it's like one of the things that they did and I don't think it I think it was just for to play Pictionary and Risk and Chess at the same time. There you go. That's what it says. Because I don't think that they did it for like alchemy specifically but they they made um the four color omnath cost mm -hmm. one more on arena because it was just breaking standard um and that's one really? of the things yeah. yeah they 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 edit the mana values the yeah. the power and toughness to make it more fair the to balance alchemy things. alchemy is the only way that magic is able to uh change what cards do and they're only changed in alchemy and it's it's the digital format yeah. that it you can't have it. Like, I am so reeling of, from that news though for the Omnath. Here's oh, yeah. well, no, what was, in logical sense does that make? Act, it was, like it was why too, they too, tried? It was, too it was too powerful, so they they added a mana. Yeah, they nerfed it. It's they just nerfed like balancing it. in a video game. It's so like, well, okay, my point is, yeah. you release a paper product, yeah, right, and then you have a very sophisticated, mm -hmm. more or less, video game in which okay, 
we are justifying this for the sake of the online p- format, but yeah. fuck the level of money that we had to put into making this one paper. Who cares about that? We have no, to cut no, a no. To That's make still legal in paper. Yeah, that card is still legal in paper. So or, is Omnath Locus of Creation in paper five or or four? It's four. It's four. So why on online is it five? Because it was broken. Because alchemy is a format where they're experimenting okay, well, with they, changing the values. Okay, okay, well that explains. It, so it, if you want to go, just, if you're throwing it in an online format just for the sake yeah, of it's seeing like, how it's, they, it's it like makes the, sense, but like, still it's stupid. It's, it's like what they're doing. You just ban Omnath from that format. That's well, where I think. What what it comes down to is it's not they they don't want to ban cards that they don't have to, and a lot of it comes down. So to... So you change the mana completely. Well, so hold on. So that let bothers me. Hold on. Let me finish. That's confusing. We currently we have both. Yeah. We have a format where. Like and, and the reason that alchemy exists, I will give a nod to alchemy. People were asking for years, well, oh, okay. shit, if you, if you fucked up on the design, why can't we just change it? Yeah. You can't because it's printed. If, if somebody opens a booster pack, who the hell, how are they supposed to know that Oko's cost four, yeah. right? It, it's printed on the card. Yeah. Alchemy was the, the let's try. Let's yeah. create an environment uh, okay. where we can augment. And yeah. instead of uh, banning okay. it where everybody has to just throw it in the garbage, yeah. let's try and make it balanced. It's let's try and balance it. Uh, like recently, no, yeah, I, no, recently you, yeah. I played Mirko. And you there was no one unless the, you experiment. Um, yeah. Recently, I played Mirko, and there was one of the cards that like you had noticed when we were playing that game. Go check it out. Um, uh, where they had eroded the card, like the reprint had come, where they just changed the wording of it slightly, so it's still the same effect. It was still doing it. something, something, some, some mill card. I can't remember. Curiate, I think it might have been. But you noticed just while we were playing, it's like, oh, hey, they changed the word or they they updated the wording of that card because they eroded it. It's the exact same thing, but you can't really do that when it comes to something because like if they were to errata uh omnath and be like okay no we we made him busted at four we're gonna make him four mana now all of a sudden that four mana omnath that all these people have are gonna be completely playing it wrong in paper format all yeah that stuff. You, like they'll never know that it got updated unless they encounter somebody I else just, who's doing I, it I, for me okay and i understand it kind of makes sense why make alchemy to begin with then because people were pressuring, I, I know, people were pressuring them for years to at least give. Uh, l- let us play in an environment where you, where you can edit things. Yeah. And the, I, I, I will. I I'll bring. It. I'll bring up Hearthstone again. It. I'll bring up Hearthstone again. Hearthstone doesn't exist in paper. Yeah. Hearthstone has never existed in paper. Yeah. Hearthstone is a digital game. Mm-hmm. It is a Blizzard game. It is a card game. If if they fuck up a card, they edit. They they change it. Yeah. And that's how Hearthstone always was. And. People were constantly just being like, "Man, like you make this Oko and then you ban it in every format. It's a chase rare." I guess wizards like, only fucked up by just... just making it a wizards thing. Because oh no, well, the fans are gonna make every reason to make this a bad fucking take. Well, no? no, no, no. And I mean, part of it is kind of like let's let's circle around to like companion, right? Lutri banned before products even hit the shelf. I mean, I think that was just bad foresight. You but mean no, you mean Lumitri? No, Lutri. <laughs> I have I have a habit of uh, pronouncing cards wrong on purpose. <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> But I, I mean, I think um, that for cards like, like that, you're just there's not enough people but no, who but had enough like, sleep that yeah. day who were like, "Oh, I'm so I don't know how I missed that." Guys, because, you have all well, the money well, in the world to well, hire the well, right team. Well, Lutri, like, Lutri, come on! <laughs> I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Lumitri still had play in standard and stuff. Uh, Lutri was great in draft. Yeah, really good in draft. Um, I don't um, think he ever really made an impact in yeah. any format. But I, mean, I, mean, I, I just mean like it wasn't banned in other formats. It was, it was, only, it was right? banned in Commander because it was an auto-include in every Commander deck that uh, could, that could play. with a Zet on yeah. it. It was, um, it was an extra, it was an eighth card in hand yeah. for every deck that had a Zet. So Alchemy is, is it, Alchemy is just the digital version of just like so that that doesn't happen. So that, oops, we printed something that Foresight, oh, we didn't 20,000 ish cards into the format regardless of what's on arena and what's not. Uh, oh hey, we didn't realize that this weird ass combo You know what's exists. funny? Is, we can fix that. You know what's I, funny I is it, that like, that example yeah. is the outlier of uh uh com- companions were so busted yeah. that they did do the full oracle. Yeah. Where it doesn't matter. Yes, you open this card in paper. It says this. That's not what it does. You have to pay three to put it in your hand. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I just, it, per, it was for so me broken. It just feels like the people in charge had way too many toes in different puddles in order to make it work. And I'm like, you th- know what? We're, we're talking about an intrinsically complicated game. And by adding psych- the human psychology factor yeah. into the response of what you could create from something that was already ingrained from 1993, yeah. I feel like. That was a bit of a boo boo. Yes, and yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna parrot what I very often hear on Magic Mike's. Uh, shout out to you guys, man! Like, I will never criticize you guys for trying. R and D, keep swinging for the fences. Absolutely. If you fuck up, do something about it. But yeah. like, we can't criticize them for trying. No. They are 30 years 
deep. Yeah, you're, and you're they are not, struggling to find ways to make this game innovative and interesting. They're dealing with people too. Yeah, Even, right. Well, their dealing, audience right. Dude, is in squirrels. When, okay? when in 1993, it's easy to make the squirrel feed, not oh, wait, people. In, in wait, 1993, there was no Twitter. Wait, so wait, wait, people, <laughs> the magic players aren't squirrels. Well, I mean, they are, but no, but that's not what. That's not how they like to be treated. Okay. I thought everybody who played this game was nuts. <laughs> But um, but um, yo. I mean, you kind of have to be to be so. That was good. Socially inept. That was a terrible. That was joke. good. <laughs> anyway, so, somebody please shit on me in the comments for that one. As much as Stay I here. that was that was. Rude. As much as I have said, like screw alchemy. It's I, annoying. Again, I it's annoying in regards to it's it's kind of like custom cards when I scroll through Facebook or or Twitter or something. Like if I see one, I'm just like, man, I don't have the mental real estate to deal with this shit. It's not real. <laughs> And like alchemy feels like I don't I don't care I don't want to look at it because it's not real. There's there's already too many cards to think that's about. That's like that's like we're going through a tournament. Let's remove blue. Yeah, like literally. That's to me. But, it's no, that's I will say. No, it's too in the head. I will say. I only green. I don't personally like alchemy, but I know that the reason that it's still on arena is because people are playing it. And if you guys are enjoying it, I'm not telling you not to enjoy it. Go nuts. And if there is enough people playing it, it'll continue to have cards made. Uh, one thing I heard on, uh, was it the Dive Down podcast today at, while I was at work? The amount of cards that they have c- created for alchemy, mm-hmm. new cards mm-hmm. for alchemy, if they had only just put that team in charge of backfilling the rest of the cards in Magic onto the client, they would have all of Modern. There's mm-hmm. that many cards, apparently, that have been added to alchemy that if, if you just did that, you would have a playable Modern format on arena so there's a lot of vitriol now where it's just like why are you focusing on alchemy when you could be doing like making this the premier client for all formats and i understand some people like alchemy i do i do feel like it's it's a it's a, a very like um it's it's an experiment that needed to happen i don't know if it's the future of magic. The, the editing, happen. the editing, updating, and altering side of it, hundred percent agree. The conjuring power nine into your deck, like I'm sorry, no. And this is a hot take, and we might lose a sub over this or not. Um, if you're the kind of person who specifically goes out of their way to play the alchemy cards because like you're having a grand old time with them, I'm sorry. Learn to play magic better because those cards are objectively broken, and you're not helping. You're not you're not helping the formats. The one thing I have to the last you're, thing I have to say about alchemy. You're not. What is that famous Ian Malcolm quote? Okay. Um You spent all that fucking time spending your fucking time doing the thing you fucking <laughs> wanted to do and you probably shouldn't have fucking done it. Yeah. It's well, you, they didn't it's <laughs> that's not the quote. They were they were they were too crazy busy right here. Spent too much time <laughs> thinking about <laughs> if you could. You didn't, didn't think, think whether or not I like my version should. more. And um, also, he's naked when he's actually it. sorry. I, I should have brought this up as an example earlier about cards that you can't do in paper. Yeah. The reason that alchemy, like the earliest alchemy cards that were like wild, yeah. was you play a planeswalker or a, a thing, and out of the twenty five abilities this card could have, mm-hmm. it would pick three at random. Mm-hmm. Oh, Those yeah, are yeah. digital things that you can't, you fucking can't do in paper. Eh. The only way that it was ever done in paper eh. was the. Who is it? Oh, was... No, oh, well, hold on. What? Of course. No, continue. Would... Continue. I just have the. The only time they ever did this in paper, which they succeeded on, was Urza Headmaster. There we go. In uh, one of the unsets. Ask, they, ask, ask Urza.com. Ask Urza. Ask it was, it was Urza. a Urza. planeswalker yeah, yeah. that said, uh, plus one, ask Urza.com. It, it sent you to a website to go r- r- randomly roll an ability. So, yes, they did do that. But in um, in Arena, or sorry, in Alchemy, they like the, you'd cast the card. It would, like, boom the abilities. And then that card was, like... It wasn't a token. It didn't act like a token. It was not physically a token. It was a card in your deck. So you could bounce it. You could flicker it. It was like, these are digital things that you can't do in paper. And Challenge accepted. Wait, you want to you wanna, you wanna do an alchemy episode? No. <laughs> I despise alchemy. Uh, I have been playing a lot of arena lately. No, one, this talk just, especially that last little point, just instilled something in me because we were last podcast talking about doing like custom commanders of like us as, as magic creatures. Oh yeah, my I want, I want, I'm gonna create a custom card and I'm gonna try and balance it. I'm gonna try and find a way to make this fair where it is. It's roll a d20. Whatever you roll, you get that effect on the card. And you just have like a little cheat sheet ledger. Yeah, why not? Perfectly legal in the general sense of how things work. Anyways, you get your own little like honored or like a uh, little like uh, 
uh, exploring the dungeon kind of card where just like, oh, you know, this effect is what happens right now. Brando, the dice. Brando, alchemy enjoyer confirmed. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, oh, I just had that. There was, there was another idea. <laughs> there, there was another. No, there was another idea in there. Uh, oh, right. No. So a question and a curiosity to our audience, anybody who's paying attention, anybody who's listening, um, Spotify, whatever, go over to our YouTube, head over to our Facebook, hit us up. For a long time, I've been trying to do an idea kind of like building like a little like extra way to spice up games nothing changing i have a few rules uh written down so far but it's basically an idea of like the beginning of your game you roll a d20 and it will add an extra effect kind of like a mini planes chase oh. everybody rolls a dice d20. chase dice chase everybody rolls a d20 we and could we like could make a way sleazier name than that <laughs> Everybody, every, every dice like, chasse. At the beginning of the game, everybody rolls like a dice, and some level of it's an extra effect that's going like to take a world modifier. A world modifier. Everybody has like all of your lands produce double. Everybody or certain players or when you do something, you get an extra effect. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sort of plane chase. Right? It's 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 sort of plane chase, but it's mini plane chase because the whole idea is like you're starting the game with modifiers on the game, something that is yes. going to either help or hinder the game at large. Oh, actually, sorry. I just want to... I know that we're not going to be able to fit this in for our next recording day, but uh, a listener suggested a incredible thing. I got to go to Messages, Silent Revelry. He it suggested that Kyle. we do... Kyle! Yeah, he suggested that we do some games coming up. Oh, was it in here? Uh, where was it? It's a certain card... Suggestion for your next EDH game. Um, you play with a non-interactable possibility storm in play. Shit is wild and fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I've been meaning yeah, yeah, to yeah, bring yeah, it up yeah, with yeah, you yeah. guys. I know I, I mentioned it to you briefly. You did, yeah. Um, I want to do it. I, I We're going to record on Sunday. We're not going to be recording Commander. Other than the follow-up pre-cons, we'll, I would love to get to this for the next time because it sounds hilarious. Absolutely. Because, are you familiar with possibility storm? I hate it's that a, card. You know, I have <laughs> played, I I have played with possibility storm and memory pool. Or no, what is it? Knowledge pool on the yeah. same battlefield. Yeah. Because that's disgusting. Because of possi uh, possibility storm, somebody played an artifact, and knowledge pool came out, and I have never mm -hmm. in my life seen a more ceased uh. bullshit interaction. Like okay. I may as well have been playing Judge's Tower. Anyways, you can yeah. Go, you I mean can that, carry away. that likely won't happen again, but we can't promise anything. It might you be bullshit. <laughs> you know what? You know what? And I and I and I seriously mean this. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what any of those twenty rules can be for the roll of the dice, to just add modifiers. Do that. That's oh. going on the list. Also, I know that we haven't really mentioned. I don't know. I think we probably mentioned um, sometime in this calendar year of of Jesus our Lord twenty twenty four. We are going to start a Patreon, and we are trying desperately from our end to figure out um, what to provide as an incentive or like what to do for people to to oh, justify giving us money oh, no, easy dude we have merch we have extra well, merch little, is outside I'm of not getting extra, naked we have extra little for anyone <laughs> uh also coming to the channel at some point this year our only fans only tasteful you're not nudes. supposed to reveal that i lied only tasteful nudes. <laughs> um, tasteful fans that's what we're taste, calling tasteful it. fans <laughs> um I completely I'm I sorry. Going. I was I was trying to talk about how um, we're gonna try and think about starting a Patreon here. I, I yeah, wanted like, no, in our next meeting. I wanted to kind of figure out like yeah. how do how do we how do we do this because we, we very much can't just start a Patreon and ask for money and do nothing extra, right? We have to start. No, to it has it. to. No, so, no, the project, the, the funds have to go towards the merch, project. Right? Merch slash exclusive merch slash when we get new merch sort of thing. It's first up sort of slash. Thing. Uh, uh, disc or special choosing disc what number five on that dice means yeah. is what I was kind of alluding towards, right? Oh, okay. like letting, letting our patrons oh, choose, yeah. letting our patrons choose what frankly abilities are on those numbers. We could we could take this further. So Dan, uh, uh, Brandon's dice roll idea that could be left to the patrons to decide. That's what he was saying. That's what he. Yeah. Well, I we, mean, we, like we'll out of like one it, and five, you know, we'll the call five it rolling miss. rogues. Yeah, and like one <laughs> and six. No, I mean like out of a tweet d tweet. Oh my god, a tweet twenty. I think the tweet twenty. No, you guys are missing the like the right head on the nail on this one. It's Patreon chase. Patreon chase. Patreon yeah, chase. Chasing those pa patrons. Patron chase. Chase them down well, the alley. For one reason, we want your money. Patron chase. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's planes chase we, by the we'd love your support. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's called Patreon for a reason. Yeah. Patron meaning we are at your disposal. We can only have the agency provided that you give us. 
So please, honestly, no, this is a big, big deal um, for us. I know, I know one thing on that as well is um, there's been interest of other groups kind of doing that stuff um, where like uh, Patreon stuff where it's just like, especially because you guys are brewers. Um, Cody kind of brought this up the other day too, of doing like a part of the, like whatever Patreon services, uh, having us build decks for people not necessarily go through the cards or we can do that depending oh i'd on love that mm. no, but it's I just like that. hey my deck's kind of like suffering a little bit i really need a little bit of help spicing this up you guys you brew so much i, I mean what i would, I would struggle do? with that there's like you know as a, as a playlister as someone yeah. who finds a nuance like i can literally attribute everything to magic yeah from music to art to anything yeah and as someone who is a living potential catalyst for anyone's like i don't want to i i've gone forever being like i'm not a pez machine but at the end of the day i love being filled with candy and open up my mouth i'll vomit something sweet literally no i mean it like i like pez if, if anyone when everyone is like when when brando's been like yo can you make me a playlist for henzy yeah it makes me so fucking happy yeah so honestly at the end of the day especially when the patrons are like you know uh, what we feel like you could do this perfect perfect chance for us to really actually even challenge ourselves and do something different do you, do you have a compendium anywhere of the various mtg playlists that you've put together because i know that they're like it's loose. Just spotify it's just all on spotify it's all on the the uh, rogues passage archives yeah we do actually have yeah rogues where, passage i have about 75 where, 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 would our, where would our viewers go to find that you would search on spotify would, rogues passage rogues archives? passage archives specifically yeah so you just type in rogues passage archives you will find my account that is completely dedicated to the Rogue's Passage and over <clears> 75 <throat> plus now playlists dedicated. Actually, I might be fucking up that number, yeah. but over, well over that, pushing 100 playlists yeah. purely dedicated here's the, to Magic the Gathering. Here's the ad spot. Would you like to pump your schwants? Please. <laughs> 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 Please. Oh, hi, Johan. <laughs> do you want, do, oh, hey, baby. <laughs> What's up, destroy Giddy? destroy booty to some Phyrexian beats? <laughs> do you then need... yes, Brady Magpie has tailored them for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like we're 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 over an hour and a half at this point. There is um, one last thing that I wanted to talk about. Do you want anything before else? Before you do, just because we're on the topic of the music, um, uh, Arlen Pax Hope playlist, Casla oh. Casla playlist, and Alundo the Sizzle the Seer. I'm a little biased because he made them after my decks. All of them are some of just the best playlists of music oh, I've yeah. ever heard. In my I guess life. we the should Sizzle say the Seer, the Alundo playlist, the Alundo radio playlist. It's over like four hours long it's but it good. is it's slapped so we're good. talking like the best new disco on the market we're talking like yep. jungle oh god yeah, there's I, like miami horror on there i will you know, say a lot of synth pop disco vibes like oh just good stuff i will say brady curates these playlists based on the like I, like i guess what you would say like the mind palace of what encompasses I, this montage. legendary creature so, or type of deck right i've yeah. seen a lot of montages in my life some of the best and honestly all of them are inspired by anime so my playlists specifically have a montage which with an anime formula with a musical concept so as an example like uh some of them like i've done a, a shieldred more more frankly she's my girlfriend i've done a lot to her <laughs> so there's one that's like the <laughs> shieldred's restoration is purely an ost concept of a slow grind what would it take for a crazy hyper psychedelic mechanical industrial montage of her body slowly being created and it's brilliant soundscape so we're talking like oh god what's on there there's noisia not not like slamming big house drum and bass noise no we're talking like sinkhole oh yeah no we're talking the weird oh. shit yeah. we're talking a sam by amon tobin no like we're talking weird sounds and i, I think about this stuff like i i yeah i don't want to keep i can keep writing about yeah. this yeah you know? yeah just go we check do... out the playlist They're broken yeah. broken halos trance music so henzy grunge alundo new disco no the, the sky's the yeah. limit you can look up uh tiny bones we're talking like really fun uh frankly quirky <laughs> like All it's right. a weird no, okay i'll stop right. i'll stop All right. okay All right. well i want i was gonna say we're gonna link it here you can go check it out uh rogues passage archives brady puts it together masterful he's he's a mixtape with legs and arms. I have over 300 playlists. You don't even, they don't even have to yeah, be magic that, playlist, magic related. Scoreboard. Just go, per, yeah. Please peruse. Yeah. Right. My uh, Prosper, the Prosper Tomebound uh, chapters is my favorite. Just, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's passionate. I don't know so if you passionate. can tell. I got um, OCD. There's, <laughs> speaking of passionate people, yeah. dope podcasts and great content. Oh. I've recently finished, there's only a few episodes out on this podcast. I want to talk about Lorebound Legends. Um, our homies, uh, local here as well, uh, Dan from Into the 99 and his partner, 
I can't remember her name right now. Kaylin. Kaylin. Beautiful, beautiful soul. Yeah. Both of them have Spider just, fingers. Both of them have the <laughs> most beautiful voices for like radio. Oh my god. Dan, Listen, no. Okay. Listening Dan, to the two of them, especially, I will say, and I haven't. I, I did say in the end of the ninety nine Discord, I was just like, man, I'm enjoying this so much. But what I want to say is. It is so nice listening to you two talk about the 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 lore, the magic lore. Reading, like talking about the books. They, like I didn't realize that. Like they're starting with all of the original books. Mm-hmm. There's like 18 books that were written before the Brothers War, mm-hmm. and then when the Brothers War was written, everything was wiped. They were like, "Fuck all that! It's not canon. We're changing everything." And it, like, so there's a ton of shit that's like not canon. Mm-hmm. And then the Brothers War like starts the canon from them from their forward. Yeah, no, because they had King to spearhead of that. Yeah, because I, I own those trilogies. Yeah. yeah, they had to like they had to curtail how many how many other people were like influencing or like injecting their 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 canon into it. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. eventually they had to be like, no, 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 wait, like you guys are way off base with some of this stuff because originally, one thing I wanted to say about this, like the uh, originally it was like when you summoned a creature. Like we're talking alpha, like mm-hmm. like Lana War Elves. Let's say you 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 you're supposed to be the planeswalker that's like summoning these creatures, right? Mm-hmm. In the original way that they thought about it, or I don't maybe these these uh, people writing the books, it wasn't so much that you were summoning the spell that was like a a, a druid, right? Mm-hmm. You were not creating a conjuring a spell out of mana. You were ripping that fucking Lana War Elf from its plane and enslaving it and sending it to its death. Mm-hmm. Well, no offense, <laughs> but authors saw ahead and you're like, no. At yeah. the end of the day, here's here's You're like this is really dark. Here's all I have to say about it. You try to give humanity an idea, a, a reference point, and you expect them to intrinsically follow it to a T. No, go fuck yourselves. We're talking about artists here. We're talking about writers. They're not gonna listen. They to did you. their best. They're not gonna listen. <laughs> they to did you. their best. Sorry. But yeah, like I, I just wanted to give a huge shout out any of our listeners that are listening to this here. I, I, as as I say usually at the end here, if you're still here, if you're listening to our sultry voices, thank you so much you for mean being your here. Voice. <clears throat> Come I on, can't, I can't stay. Our, I can't stick with the goddamn tone our voice. sultry voice. <laughs> if you're here um, and you're listening to us and you even slightly care about this, I really recommend going and checking out Lorebound Legends. They're on YouTube, Spotify. All those other podcast outlets. Um, Daniel is a secret lore gangster, and uh, I love it. I want more. I yeah, want more. He's and also just... a candle maker, and he's yeah, yeah. He, he fights <laughs> cops or something. I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 I am never surprised anymore with the stories that coming from that individual. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. I don't think I can get any more hard. And just I mean, like, stop. I, I've, I've done, a, <laughs> done a podcast with the guy, but I've still never met you. Oh, so. trust, you'll, you'll, you'll get the impression. He's it's honestly like I was going to say, like, he has the voice for it. Daniel, if you could ever just sing me to sleep, sing the, the, the Misty Se- the Misty Mountain <laughs> song from Lord of, the, Lord of the Rings, please just just cradle me in your ginormous <laughs> arms. You know, like, while I uh, suck my thumb, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. I can hear the sounds now of Grey Matters. And this, is he saying wonder, something? I hear him saying he, something. Is he saying? I think he's saying like, subscribe, and <laughs> ring that bell, everybody. Hey, ring the bell. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to Gray Matters for the sexy music that he lets us use for these episodes. Absolutely. Yes, please like and subscribe. Um, sh- uh, Spotify ratings are good for us. Comments and all that stuff, man. Just even interaction, please. The game engagement without interaction. We need your plays. And we want to hear from you. We want to know if you like what we're doing. If uh, if there's topics you want us to address that we haven't thought of, or that other people you don't find other people talking about, like we want to try and uh, help fill the help fill the void of the internet with uh, stuff that you find interesting. Yeah, and that we find interesting. We want to fill your void here at the Rogues Passage Podcast. <laughs> Holy shit, boys! We <laughs> yeah. boys, we made it start to finish. Yo, we did it. We made it start to finish, boys. We got a bingo. Oh wait, no. We, one <laughs> one thing before we do to truly finish this. Uh, Jewel Lotus is objectively broken and needs to be banned. Fuck you. That was hey, my hey. point. No, Jewel Lotus and why it's a must for deviancy. Next podcast. Next podcast. <laughs> if you want to hear us pop off about broken manor rocks uh you can go to our first episode <laughs> or listen to the next episode of the rogue Special podcast yep anyway uh we'll see you guys later thank you so much for hanging yeah. out uh we're gonna send it into <laughs> the ether <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Should I save it because it's bear related, or should I just fire into it right here? Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna I fire into it. Okay, we can, we can, we can. All right. Yeah. Sorry, it, I sat it, down it, in the middle it, of. Put it after the credits, right? Do you have an yeah, I guess we can just put all this at the end. Hi, oh, yeah. hi, ending of the episode. <clears throat> hi, ending of the episode. Um, so you just heard that little story. Um, my toxic trait is that I think I'm a Disney princess. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. You fucking step on my toes, bitch. I uh, I uh, had a situation. Mm-hmm. I used to live uh, southern Calgary, where we're kind of close to like outskirts of the city, the Fish um, Creek Park around that area i didn't want to like put too much nuance of like where i lived you know don't need to what's get, your sin number don't need exactly <laughs> um i was sitting outside because it was just better back in those days for me i had my laptop i would go out there to like game watch whatever because like if i'm going to sit on a computer for like whatever during the night i'd rather be outside fresh air be able to like pace around just exist so i'm out in my garage it's a heated garage i'm sitting there and mm. i like I'm watching stuff, and from, like, my periphery, I kind of notice movement. And, like, I look to my side, and there's a grizzly bear standing in the doorway of the garage. And it, like, is just, like, standing there looking at me. And I'm like, oh. And it, full-blown, like, yogi bear plops its butt down, just sits right outside the door. And is just kind of, like, sitting there being, like, a happy little friend visiting me. And I'm like, I very slowly get up. and I'm like, if I put you on hold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like... (laughs) hello mr bear and i just gently close the door and i seal it and i lock it and i'm like okay i'm gonna go back to my computer now oh yeah because your computer was in the garage right yeah yeah yeah. yeah. terrifying experience but it's just i have yeah I, my toxic trait is i think i'm a disney princess <clears throat> i can i can befriend that bear all right all right let's go let's <clears throat> shake it up <clears throat> and then okay i'm gonna go back in and talk about this boros heroic deck